I'm here in Portugal with one of Portugal's greatest winemakers, Dirk Nieport. We've just been in the Douro Valley, tasting 2011 vintage ports, tasting excellent table wines. Dirk, I knew, I've known you for 25 years, and uh, you make excellent vintage ports, but also you make great table wines. And I think that sometimes people can't understand how you can do both. Tell me about your experience with port and table wines. No, I think Dodo is special. It's different. <clears throat> While, you know, classics like Bordeaux, Burgundy, Mosul, you talk about one to hundred meters of difference. You talk about usually south-facing exposures, east-west a little bit. In the Dodo, it's much more complicated, more complex. We're talking about 80 to 800 meters height. Uh, lots of vineyards, north, east, west, and so you have a big diversity. And we have 85 different varieties. So, wow. I mean, the potential is huge. And I think one, one thing for me is clear. The best vineyards for port are not necessarily the best for making wine. So we have to understand the Doro from a different perspective. I think we know where the great vineyards are for port. Now we have to try to rethink the vineyards. And I think north-facing vineyards are part of the secret. High vineyards, uh, the vineyards, you know, at 600, 700 meters, they ripen totally different. And so, you know, when it rains <clears throat> at the bottom vineyard, you, you have a great danger of rot very quickly on the high vineyards you don't have. So it's a question of timing and right picking. And port seems to like extreme situations. So it likes excesses of heat, it likes um, drought, no rain. Um, for wine, I think that's not so good. You need more even, you need some more moisture. <clears throat> you need maturation going evenly, maintaining acidity. So, so describe a great uh Doro table wine, what, what sort of character style should it be? I think Doro has one big advantage. It, even if it's analytically not very high in acidity, there is something about it that gives freshness, lightness, um, <clears throat> even though I think acidity is important. But um, well, a good Doro wine will be a gutsy wine with a lot of character, a lot of structure, good tannin. Um, it will be aromatically on the full side, on the, on the richer side. But <clears throat> if we are careful and don't pick overripe grapes, I think we can make fantastic, fresh, vibrant wines that age very well. And in this, with good sort of flinty, yep. good tannins. Minerality, I yeah. think, is, is the key uh, to the Doro. Um, I, don't, I can't explain, because I have some colleagues that make overripe grapes, uh, wines, uh, and yet there's still something fresh about it. Mm. So I think if we, if we focus more on higher vineyards, I think we can even get more of that. Well, here's tomorrow great wines from the Doro. Cheers. Well, this is not necessarily great Doro wine, but it's a great Vigne <laughs>